Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a requested video. You guys asked me to make a macro guide for beginners, so that's what this video is gonna be about. So um, I did ask on my Instagram if you guys had any questions pertaining to beginners, you know, beginner macro counters, trackers, whatever you wanna call yourselves. Um, and I got way more questions than I anticipated, so um, I am going to continue with my original plan of just making this a guide for beginners, but I am going to try and address most of those questions in this video. Now, if I don't answer your question in this video, I will either do a separate Q&A video for that, or I'm also thinking about turning this into its own little series, in which case I'll place this video into a playlist once I have the rest of the videos recorded and uploaded. Um, so, you know, that's kind of an idea I have going on right now, just making this whole like macro thing into an entire series. Um, cause there's just so much to cover and there's one video can't do it all. Um, the boys will not leave me alone. So they're going to make random appearances now that they're allowed in this room. <laughs> all right. So me and Thor are ready to teach you guys about macronutrients. So everything you eat contains macronutrients, AKA macros and micronutrients, AKA vitamins and minerals. It's important to have a balanced intake of both. I know a lot of people, you know, they stress about the macros and all you see all over Instagram is macros, but it's really important to have your micro intake as well daily. That's what's gonna promote daily um, just health and function of regular things. Um, so your macronutrients are the nutrients that are needed in large amounts for survival, energy production, they support your metabolism and muscle growth and recovery. Micronutrients are what your body needs in smaller amounts, like your vitamins and minerals. So this is going to promote digestive health, uh, hormone function, um, increased mental just health and function, and just your overall health. So that would be like your daily servings of uh, fruits and veggies. Now a few things I want to cover is fiber, sodium, and sugar intake. Fiber intake should be anywhere from like 21 grams all the way up to 35 grams, kind of depending on if you're male or female and um, you know how big you are. But if you're in the 20 to 30 range, you're gonna be good. Sodium intake, a lot of people you know, kind of ask about this. I personally just go off of the recommended uh, daily intake off of my fitness pal, it's 2300 milligrams, um, and I try to stay underneath that. Um, if I'm like deep in an off season, I'm like really enjoying life, then, you know, I may be eating, you know, a lot of sodium at that point. Um, you know, but then I just have to take into account, okay, I'm probably holding water, but if I don't care at the present moment, it's not a big deal. However, if I'm in prep, I'm probably eating a lot less than 2,300 milligrams. So as, as long as you're not in prep, you really don't have to be too crazy about it as long as you're just eating it in moderation. All of these things are really great in moderation, but they can be bad if you go overboard with it, and some of them can be bad if you have, don't have enough of it. Um, so the next thing is sugar. My recommendation for women is anywhere from 60 to 80 grams, and for guys, just to stay underneath 100 grams a day. Okay, so now you know the basics of what a macro, a micro is, um, what your fiber, sugar, and sodium intake should be. Now let's talk about how to track. So the easiest thing to do, and what I do and what I have my clients do, is use the app called MyFitnessPal. You've probably heard of it by now. Um, this is what it looks like. It's a blue app. It's a free app. Um, there is a paid version, but you don't have to get the paid version. I've never used it, and I've been just fine. But it's the blue app, the little white guy that's like running on it. Uh, so you click on that. And then, let's see, down at the bottom, you'll have a home screen and a diary screen. I really need a manicure, I'm sorry, guys. Um, so in the diary screen, you can input all of your foods. Now, that might seem like a lot of work at first, but um, if you're anything like me, I generally eat a lot of the same foods all the time. Um, so for example, so you're in your diary, it says meal one, there's a little plus sign that says add food. So you press add food, and then if you look, in the upper right hand screen right there, there's a barcode right there. So you can literally scan all of your foods and input it that way. And once you scan something under a certain meal, um, the next time that you go to input something, so I go back and I press add food, it has a recent column. So all the food that I've recently added, it's there for a quick add so that you can just select it and add it. Also in my fitness pal, um, it I don't remember what the meal names are whenever you first sign up. I think it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Um, but you can go on a laptop, go to a, a desktop, 
instead of your phone and you can change the meal names. So like my meal number one says meal number one in daily sups. Two, meal three, I have meal four, meal five and six, and then I have ice cream and dessert. And so whenever you're tracking, my suggestion to you is to track something delicious at the end of every day, um, but track it first to make sure that it fits. Um, so for example, my delicious thing tonight is gonna be my level one ice cream sandwich protein, because I make that into protein ice cream with the almond milk, and then I have Reese's Puff cereal, that's gonna be my topping for my ice cream. And then also one serving of the dryer slow churned cookie dough, it's really good. Um, so I put that in first, that way no matter what, at the end of the day I get my little treat. So that kind of helps me stay on track during the day because I know that I'm getting something delicious at night. Another tip that I have for you guys with my fitness pal is you can actually um, set your goals to zero. It won't let you input those exact numbers. So my suggestion to you is to either get it as close as you can by kind of playing around with the percentages or what I did was I set my goals, I set my calorie intake goal to zero. The best way to ensure that you hit your macro goals every day is to plan ahead. So I always tell my clients the night before, you know, when you're scrolling on Instagram, stop scrolling on Instagram, go to my fitness pal and type in all of your food for the next day. Um, it's really quick, really easy. Just type it all in. And then the next morning when you wake up, wake up and follow that meal plan that you set for yourself. So it's kind of combining having a meal plan and the flexibility of macros because, you know, the day of you have to be strict and stick to your meal plan that you made for yourself. But then if you decide, hey, I didn't really, I wasn't fully satisfied today. I want something else or, you know, I'm craving something. Then the next day, you know, that night, work it in so that the next day you can have those things. For those of you that have problems hitting your macro goals, um, even if you are sitting there trying to plan it out the day before, um, my suggestion to you, say that you have a problem hitting your proteins, you're not getting enough, just slowly increase each portion size at your meals. So, you know, say that you need like 20 more grams of protein and in the morning you're having an egg white omelet for breakfast. Add one extra, uh, one extra egg white to that meal. And then say that you're having a chicken salad with like four ounces of chicken instead of four ounces, have 4.5 ounces at that meal. And then go back and kind of look at it and see if you've gotten closer to your macro goal. Also, um, you know, some people, they hit their fats way too soon. You know, my suggestion for you is to look at what kind of meats you're eating. Um, if you're eating whole eggs, that's five grams of fat at least every time that you're having an egg. Um, so maybe you need to switch to just egg whites. Um, if you're eating a lot of turkey meat, that's like 90-10 or maybe beef that's like 80-20, that's high in fat. Um, so stick to lean meats like, you know, chicken, fish, lean ground turkey meat like 99-1 or even the 93-7 is really good. Um, and, you know, just kind of try to hit your proteins and fat goals that way. Um, I find not a lot of people have a problem hitting their carbs. Usually they're over on their carbs, if anything. Um, which brings me to my next, uh, the little question I wanted to address. Someone asked, um, do you have any leniency with your macros? Um, my personal recommendation to you is to try and hit anywhere from one to five grams on your proteins and carbs. Flexibility up to 10, but you don't want to make a habit out of that. And then for your fats, you really need to try and stick between one to three grams. So that means if your fat goal is 45 grams, um, the highest you need to go is 48, and then the you know the lowest you need to go is 42. But you really want to try and get as close as you can to that macro. Fats are definitely very important since they're higher, higher, since they're higher, since they're higher in calories than the other macros. Um, your proteins and carbs, you can get away with getting you know five to 10 grams over, but ideally, if you can stick within that one to five gram range, that's going to be perfect. Now, if you're on a bikini prep and you are doing, you know, a macro-based diet, you should be hitting those on point. So make sure that you have plenty of time practicing, set up meal plans for yourself, and if you have to stick to the same meal plan for a week, just because you don't have time to play with your macros, um, then do it, because you need to be very consistent in your bikini prep. So what food should make up my macros? The way that Brandon and I believe is that you should get most of your macronutrients from inner micronutrients from nutrient-dense whole foods. So this would be lean meats, proteins, whole grains, veggies, fruits. Um, people ask, like, can I eat fruit? Of course you can eat fruit. Um, you should have one to two servings of fruit a day, about two to four servings of vegetables a day. I definitely always get mine in. Brandon's not as good about his vegetables, but he's been better recently. Um, and then from there, you know, we kind of say, allow yourself flexibility to make 
everything that you eat taste good. Like every single bite that you take should taste amazing. There's, there's not one meal that I have a day that I'm like, mm, this doesn't taste good unless I just sucked at cooking for that meal for some reason. Um, in which case it's my fault. But, um, you know, the, the diet that you're going to follow is the diet that you enjoy. So that's why we really seek to show our clients how to enjoy their diets. And that's why Brandon and I, we always input our ice cream and dessert. We input that first to make sure that it fits because we know regardless of what happens throughout the day that we have that to look forward to. And that even if we suck at cooking or, you know, we're lazy with our macros and end up having to eat egg whites at the end of the day, that at least no matter what, we're getting our ice cream at night. <laughs> Now, some people that switch to flexible dieting from a very strict meal plan, you know, they get really excited with the flexibility aspect of it and they go out and buy all of the macro friendly foods that they see all over Instagram and, you know, that's great and all, but some people, um, they're, they won't be able to have the same amount of self-control with those flexible dieting foods. So, you know, it's not that one food is bad, but it's bad if you end up binging on it, you know? So my suggestion to you is to know your food tendencies. That's gonna be different for every person. So my food tendencies will be different than yours. You know, something that might trigger you won't trigger me and vice versa. Um, for example, <laughs> Brandon and I love Skinny Pop. Like, love Skinny Pop. It's really good, macros are great. It actually has a little bit higher fi uh, fat content than normal popcorn. Um, but I kind of used to use that to kind of hit my fats. But we used to buy it in the Costco bag that was like this bag, this big. It was this big. And, you know, and so it's like every time you would take it out to like serve yourself a little portion, you'd be like, oh, one, two handfuls of popcorn. You know, obviously those don't count because I was measuring my bowl while I was eating that. <laughs> um, so for us, our tendency with the Skinny Pop is to just like randomly eat handfuls. <laughs> Um, so solution for that is to buy the Costco one that comes in the individual size portions because then once you open that, you can eat the whole thing and then you're done. There's not like an open bag that you can get back into. So for us, that's our food tendency that we have to kind of watch. Um, we did switch to Smart Pop. How do you say it? It's like Redenbacher or something. Anyways, we switched to, to Smart Pop and the macros are so much better on it and you get the entire bag of popcorn. It's like five and a half cups of pop popcorn. I think it's like 19 grams of carbs. It's so worth it, whatever it is. I eat it like every day now, I'm not gonna lie. Um, so know your food tendencies and know when you need to kind of make a change. The change for us, as silly as it might seem, was not buying the big Costco bag that is always open. Okay, now I wanna cover why I think every single person should count macros for a period of time. Now I say that very slowly so that you can understand and listen to what I'm saying. I know some people may freak out by that. Um, no, I don't think that macro counting is the only way and you know everyone has to do it. I just think it's really beneficial for you to do it for a period of time, you know, whether that's like an eight week period of time or whatever. Um, and the reason why is because you will learn so much from counting your macros and tracking your macros. Not only will you learn what is actually in the foods that you are consuming, but you will learn how your body responds to certain types of foods, to certain macros. There's just so much to be learned by tracking your food intake. And I think that it is really beneficial just in the long term because, you know, there's all those memes all over Instagram that are like macro trackers be like, and they're looking at a plate of food and it's like proteins, carbs, fats, when it's really like, you know, chicken, uh, sweet potato and I don't know, fats, whatever. Um, you know, and so it's like we don't see food the same anymore, but that's kind of the point because now, you know, if I'm going somewhere and I can't track my food, I don't have my scale or I'm purposely not tracking or, you know, I just can't find the macro intake or the macro count for whatever I'm trying to eat, I can literally look at the plate and say, well, I know that that's a source of protein. I know that would be a source of fat. I can at least classify it so then I can know how to portion control. And that's the other thing. By counting your macros, you're constantly weighing and portioning everything to the exact gram to the ounce. So now when I look at a piece of chicken, I can almost guarantee you that I'm within like a 0.3 range of guessing what that chicken weighs. We like have contests with it all the time. <laughs> um, the fish was a different story if you watched that vlog when we went home. I was off on that one, but I don't eat tilapia. So yeah, I think everyone should count their macros for a period of time just because of the knowledge that it's gonna give you that'll make this a maintainable lifestyle for you. 
Now, the question that everyone wants to know, what should my macros be? <sighs> That's a big question. My first suggestion to you would be the same suggestion that I give to my clients. You gonna help me with this one, Thor? So I would suggest to you to first off, get a MyFitnessPal account and start tracking every bite of food, every drink, every everything that you intake. Um, and do that for either three days up to seven days, between three and seven days. From there, you can figure out what your current intake is. So it's a really good kind of wake up call to kind of show you where you're at. From there, I would decide on a goal. Decide on, do I wanna cut? Do I wanna lose body fat? Do I wanna maintain? Do I like where I'm at? Um, or do I want to bulk and build muscle? If you're bulking, then you need to be in a caloric surplus. You require extra calories to put on muscle. If you are cutting, you're gonna be in a caloric deficit. And if you're maintaining, then you get to be at maintenance calories. Um, now, from there, I'm going to suggest what Lane Norton suggested a few years ago. You can just use the macro calculator that's on IIFYM.com. Um, and before everyone starts freaking out on me saying it's a horrible macro calculator, I'm going to say the same thing that Lane Norton said. We're not saying that it's, you know, defying the laws of the universe or whatever he said. That's like a quote from him. Um, it's just a good place for you to start if you literally have no idea like at all of where to start. I did notice that whenever you're on that website and putting in your calculations, if you use the total body weight, um, that is closer to, to the numbers that I would have chosen or picked than the body fat percent is. Um, so try going with that. Also, Lane Norton is coming out with his own, um, his own little macro calculator. So make sure you stay updated for that. Lane Norton, if you don't know him, he is like macro guru. Like just go look up his name. He has plenty of YouTube videos. They're super informational a million articles. He's an amazing coach. He tells you up front he's incredibly expensive. So unless you're ready to fork it out, like he'll uh, suggest other coaches to you, but he's amazing. So make sure to look him up if you want to look a little more into all of this stuff. He has plenty of YouTube videos on like reverse dieting and all kinds of stuff. So he's awesome. I forgot I wanted to answer just a few questions really quick. Um, this is from my Instagram. BML619 asked, when you measure weights, do you do it before or after it's cooked? Examples, meats and pasta. Now I'll tell you the same thing I tell all of my clients. Whatever method you choose, just make sure to be consistent with that method. So for meats, we always um, cook everything be before, like in bulk, and then we'll have like an entire tub of chicken in the fridge. So when we're going to eat, we just grab it out of the fridge and then we weigh it out. So we weigh it after we've already cooked it. Um, if we're doing pasta or rice, then we weigh that before we cook it. Same thing with oatmeal. We have to, we weigh that before it's cooked. Um, if you have any more questions on that, just ask. Captain J. Mose, uh, she asks, can you still lose weight by counting macros and not working out much? That's a great question. Absolutely. Diet is a huge part of your progress. And just by starting to track your macros and track your caloric intake, you will start to make changes. There will come a point in time to where it might start to, you know, slow down a little bit, in which case adding exercise or working out would help tremendously. But if all you can do right now is change your diet, that's huge. That will help so much. So if you need help, just let me know. LA Childs asks, would love tips on very basics of food prepping, such as how often do you cook your meals and how do you determine your meals based on your given macros? Any tips for beginners to make our prep work easier? So that's a really great question. Um, how often you prep is really up to you and your schedule. So I used to work um, minimum of 12 hour days and I was training three times a day. Um, so I didn't have time to prep during the week at all. I had Sunday afternoons and that's it. So I used to prep all of my meals for the entire week on Sundays. Um, and by the end of the week, my meals tasted like crap. <laughs> Um, thankfully, I get to work from home now. Um, my full-time job is online training. I do fitness modeling in LA sometimes, but that's just kind of like as gigs come up. Um, so I actually meal prep probably two to three times a week. I would say three times a week is better on the more realistic side. Um, and how do you determine your meals based on your given macros? I always like to get the most bang for my buck, so I like to eat the biggest portion meals that I can for the lowest calorie count um, so that I can eat more. 
Um, so those are things like spaghetti squash, cauliflower mash, um, and soup. I've been eating a lot of soup recently, but I'll be doing a separate um, video on all of my volume foods later. So stay tuned for that. Does Silva Diva asks, why does exercising adjust your macros in my fitness pal and should you not track exercise for this very reason? That's a really great question. Um, we tell all of our clients, do not track any of your exercise in my fitness pal because it, like you said, it adjusts and basically tells you to eat back those macros. Um, but what my fitness pal is not realizing is that your coaches have already taken into account the amount of exercise and output that we're asking you to do. Um, so by eating back those calories, you're going to maintain, um, or if anything gain. Um, so no, do not put your exercise into my fitness pal. One last question I'm going to answer. This is from, I think it's LDA 301. When you count carb macros, do you take the total carb gram listed or the net carb minus fiber? Thanks. Um, so that's a really great question as well. A lot of people ask this because of quest bars. They have the um, total carb, you know, count in there and they also have the net carb. The net carb just means that they're minusing out the fiber. Again, whatever you choose, be consistent with your methods. If you can't tell, consistency is key. Um, but Brandon and I have all of our clients count all of your carbs. So your veggies count for, towards your carbs, your fiber counts towards your carbs. Just count it all. That's the way that we do things. All right, you guys, that wraps up this very basic beginner to macros video. I will be making more videos as part of a macro series. So if you have suggestions on what you want me to talk about for full length videos, then comment them down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or if the content was helpful to you at all or if it answered a question you owe me, a little like maybe, yeah. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe already and feel free to share this video on Facebook or Twitter or just anywhere where you think it might be helpful. I really appreciate, that's kind of like a recommendation, so I appreciate the recommendation. And as always, if you're ever interested in any of my training programs, you can either go to my website, emilyhaydenfitness.com, or you can go to um, your email, shoot me an email at emilyhaydenfitness at yahoo.com. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Bye. Rambo says bye too. He's sleeping. Thank you for joining us. Subscribe to mommy's channel, please. Thanks, guys.